right, ladies and gents, it's your favorite sexy Asian robot right here. And tonight, I'm going to talk to you about the patch 1.93 coming to Dauntless. Now, the update is, I wouldn't, you know, you know, the past few times that I've been talking about this, I've said that the update has been lackluster because there was no actual content. This time, we're getting some actual content. However, I'm going to tell you straight up that there are still some problems with this. All right, and I've got my lovely... Kaz Manta here with me to help me shoot the video. Kaz, want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> hey there. Okay, great. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the variant behemoth, Lightbound Koshai. All right. So according to the description of Dauntless, they've said, A kind of crystalline Koshai has been spotted in the Shattered Isles. Like the Chronovore, it bends time itself through the power of Radiant Aether. But where did this new behemoth come from, and why is it so interested in an orrery mining operation on Conundrum Rocks? Rumor has it that this behemoth's parts can be used to craft a new kind of Omnicell. Sounds great, right? We're getting a new Omnicell, but here is where they've gotten lazy again. Much like with the addition of the Bloodshot Shroud, there is no armor set for the new Radiant Koshai. Listen to me again. Mm -hmm. There is no armor set for the Radiant Koshai. Why? I don't know. Again, like with the Bloodshot Shroud, they've designed a whole new behemoth and they've wasted the potential. It could be a new bond for a Radiant weapon. Radiant mm -hmm. and Umbral weapons still only have two bonds, Volamir, Rezakiri for Radiant, as well as for the, uh, the Shroud and Riftstalker for the Umbral. There's an Umbral Koshai, there's a Bloodshot Shroud. You could give us a variant weapon and a variant armor set, you know, you could. It would be very interesting and give us more options. But that is not happening. Again, so laziness. They've created a new army cell, but no new weapon and armor. Okay, fair enough. And just to confirm this, it says, Rumor has it that an orrery mining camp on Conundrum Rocks was attacked by a light-bound Koshai. Most of the researchers were evacuated, but the orrery is being tight-lipped about the purpose of their operation. All right. As Ark and Drew continues investigating the lightbound Koshai and the crystals on Conundrum Rocks, Slayers are helping to test his theories and push the boundaries of crystal use by crafting the new Artificer Omnicell with lightbound Koshai parts. So, yeah. Um, we're getting, like I said, we're getting a new Omnicell, but no new armor with this, which kind of disappoints me. You know, I, I, feel, I feel a little bit disappointed about that. Kaz is an independent. What's your take? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'll be honest, I, I agree. I think that for every new behemoth, even if it's a new version of an old behemoth, that you should at least get an armor set, even if it's just a transmog. However, what I will say is mm -hmm. most of the time when I see a new behemoth crafted from an old one, I'm usually super disappointed, like the fat battle strike. <laughs> um, however, this, this coach I looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I have to give it to them. Like, if, if the actual Koshai in-game looks like the picture, then they did a beautiful job. I, I think However, I think that the actual would look awesome, but yeah, it's such wasted potential because it looks it awesome, really you is. know? Can, because you could, can you imagine an armor set made with those colors? It yeah, would be so it'll be cool. like a radiant kind of rainbow armor set. It'll be yeah. really very cool looking, you know? Um, it, that would have been beautiful. Okay, now moving on, the next thing is the Omnicell is called Artificier. Basically, you are going to have a crystalline drone that can perform a variety of actions and it will let the Slayer step into a true support role. First of all, there has never been a need for a support role. Never. Not even once. Not even once. Just so you know. There has never been a need for a support role. Here's the problem. Why would you make a support-based Omnicell when there's no reason to support any other Slayer? The best way to literally support other Slayers, kill the Behemoth fast. Damage has always been the name of the game. This will be agreed to even, you know, I'm, I'm not one to push the so-called meta, you know, quotation marks there, meta, but the meta, the so-called meta builds are all about flawless play, which means that you should be going catalysts popping your tonics and everything all offensive cells no support so, so where does this fit in you see this is where there's a disconnect between the so-called elite and us okay the real community the real community doesn't play flawlessly 
So, so it seems to me like Dauntless is trying to shift its focus toward the casual, or rather real community, as opposed to the elitists who only believe in flawless play. This artifice, your Omnicell, was clearly designed for the more casual players who want to play with friends and perhaps support their friends, but is that really necessary? You see... Okay, I, let me step in here for a second. Mm -hmm. I, I say yes. Okay. Especially if you're in a team, if you're in a full team, and maybe, you know, someone is slightly lower than, than everyone else or don't have the higher armor, but you're still... Like, it, it, it works in a team basis. However, if you're running on your own and you're going to do, for instance, an escalation, it's it's not going to work there because what happens if four people turn up mm -hmm. with this new Omni cell? It defeats the purpose then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to have, like, for instance, if four people run this, you're going to have four people with this support cell. And who has the damage cell? Yep. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's it's... It will work in a, a team comp if you play with or run with the same people. But once those four people then all get to end game and have end game items, then this this becomes defunct. Yes, and that is exactly the uh, oh, excuse me, that's exactly the issue that I'm foreseeing here, because. If you're if you're not even playing with friends, then you're just you're just like that guy that's just trying to be helpful. But what most mm -hmm. slayers need, and and many who have played my robot builds have seen this, they need actual damage because a lot of them are unable to do much damage to the behemoth. So they rely on somebody with a robot build to just you know smoke the behemoth and carry them through. And uh, that has been something that people have mentioned to me multiple times. So how useful will this be? We'll see. I might come up with some support builds just to make this work because I know you guys have been hungry for content. I too have been hungry for content. So I want to try and make something work here. And I, and I promise you I will try and do something with this. But let's actually take a look at its abilities before we carry on. Once you unlock the Omnicell and you use the brilliant plumes from the Lightbound Koshai to craft it, you can basically send your drone to a target and have it perform one of four actions. Number one. Revive and give a Slayer the Artificial Aura for 15 seconds. Now, this is very good when you're when you're working with, like, maybe maybe if I'm helping newer members to the game and they go down a lot, I can I can send this drone out to revive them. So I'm probably going to make some support builds based around this, which I personally think would be very helpful, you know? Um, revive and give the Slayer an Artificial Aura for 15 seconds. Can only perform this revive once every 90 seconds. That's fair. Uh, active Slayer, cleanse the targeted Slayer of all status effects and grant them Artificial Aura for 15 seconds. So, um, basically if a Slayer is in trouble, like he's burning or whatever, I can we can cleanse that Slayer. Um, it depends on how accurate the targeting is on this as well. So that's that's going to be something else that's, uh, you know, something we got to take note of. If you target the Behemoth, you can mark Behemoth Path part to take 15% damage from all sources for 15 seconds. This is good because it... Like, you can mark it together with the repeater's mark and, like, you know, do a little extra damage that way. I think that that's all right. That that seems, to me, like a, a pretty cool thing. If you target the ground, you will surround an aura, an area with a ra radiant wall for 15 seconds. The radiant wall blocks hostile projectiles and beams and applies the artificial aura to all slayers within. Huh, this could be pretty cool. This could be mm. pretty cool. So, you know... Like, um, it can create, a, like, a nice defensive wall. We stand within the wall. We get, we get you know, the, um... The aura. The aura. Okay, okay. I can dig that. And the Artificial Aura will basically restore 10 health per second. So it allows players to actually become a healer. 10 health per second. If their health is full, a stackable 10 health shield is granted every second. The health shield lasts for 25 seconds. <laughs> Excuse me. And a max of 400 shields. Thank you, I'm very blessed to have you all here. Now, the passive ability is that healing and shielding you grant is increased by 1 for every 150 life you have while granted. So, basically, you would need to run this with toughness to have the 1,600 hit points. Um, and that would basically give you the ability to, like, heal, shield everybody, um... Let's see, by every 150 life you have when granted, so at maximum 1,500, you can increase it by 10, so you can heal by 20 per second or grant 20 shields per second uh, with this with this whole thing. 
So that's that's that to me is pretty interesting. It could it could have some potential. I will say that much at least. I think it could have some potential, but if you roll this type of build, you are you are really gonna be a supporter and your damage is gonna severely suffer. So um, that I think is gonna be something that you know you'd have to be very very aware of and just um, sort of work around I'd say um, personally I think it could work it could work well it's just going to take some serious effort to to make it work and uh, we'll see how it plays out I'll, I'll have a build structured and ready for this and uh, you know I think I think it could have some potential you know a support role it might be interesting mm. All right. Um, conundrum. I think. I think mm, yeah. Sorry, before you move on, I think for end gamers, like only really number four would be the option. Yeah, the hostile projectiles and beams, mm -hmm. you know, could deflect like the blaze resikiri and all that. Mm -hmm. Could be useful running heroic escalations and stuff. At least you know, mm -hmm. like uh, one person in the team takes this, so they can like get some healing, shielding, whatever. Yeah. Could be very useful. And, and mm -hmm. the revives is, is what's important because yes. although it can only prevent, perform a revive every 90 seconds, you can revive a down slayer at a distance. You don't have to go there and sacrifice yourself. And it's an omni cell, well, yeah, so you can, you can run omni surge with it to, to get more cooldowns and perform the mm -hmm. uh, thing faster. So to me, I, I'd say that that's pretty okay to me. That's pretty okay. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Conundrum Rocks, Crystal Mines is the next thing that's coming. Conundrum Rocks has a new explorable cave system. When the Orrery discovered this cavern of glittering crystal, they sent a team to study and extract the mineral. What secrets will you uncover there? Well, we'll go explore tomorrow. Aetherwind, Honest Oz, has discovered powerful currents of invisible Aether. He needs your help exploring this strange phenomenon. Take disguise with your glider in a brand new island activity that taps into these etheric currents. Find Aetherwind crystals and use the power of a patrol key to activate them. Once activated, they'll attune you to the radiant Aether frequency, making the currents, make, marking the currents with crystal rings. Fly through each ring to earn a reward. Okay. I don't like that. Why? It just one. It seems like a waste of a troll king. And two, on and I I know forty down the patch notes they're saying they're making the glider easier on control. Well, like when I watch you on PC and you're able to dip up and down, like I can't mm -hmm. do that in a controller. Mm -hmm. it, that doesn't work on a controller. I see. So, if, if, if it, if it is fixed, then you know I'll hold my hand up and say, okay, fair enough. But if that is not fixed, and I don't have the ability to go up and down, then you're wasting patrol keys doing an action that you clearly cannot do. Yeah, no, I understand that. So, let's have a look see uh, when. Yeah. When it drops, uh, the hunt pass. Mm -hmm. The new hunt pass is out. Reach of radiance. The reach of radiance hunt pass shines bright with a full armor set. Two bonus armor transmogs, 950 total platinum. And. Alright. They have a new blinding radiance set. Then the coolest thing in there is the katana and the war pike. Um, the chain blades look noodly. The guns look okay. The axe looks alright. The hammer looks chonky. The strikers, they look sick, but yeah. The repeaters look terrible. Yeah, I know. But anyway, sh uh, more shady coins can be used to unlock this so, all right we have that going for us see can i say once again mm -hmm. right the armor set looks great and would look amazing on a male character that is not for a female character yeah they need that to make these more player. shapely it's, it's very true it's been a problem that we've been asking about continuously uh for a long time all right the other stuff like in the even mm -hmm. yeah Go sorry ahead. even if you look at the the hunt pass like what as amazing as that female um, champion looks, and she does, she looks amazing. Look at the difference between the male and the female. Mm -hmm. the male gets like this amazing shiny gold with these gold little knives or sword things, whatever they are, coming up out of his back, and the female doesn't. Like, why can't, why can't it be universal? Mm -hmm. That's what irritates me. It's like. The female characters are, are and, and their armor sets are always secondary mm -hmm. to the male. I think there's an That's what element of uh, laziness as well. They just don't want to put it on the female form because it takes a lot of work to, like, you yeah. on a female character, then it changes, you know. I think that's, what, that's where they're getting a bit lazy. Um, but again, that is the laziness of the developers, not 
not it's the fault of anyone else. It's disappointing, it's yeah. Disapp it is, because I know that I'm not the only female who's asked for this for so long. That's like, true. I see other other women on Twitter asking for the same thing, mm -hmm. and we get ignored all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. I know several several ladies who've come to my channel and just basically up and quit the game because what is there what is there for them to do? You know, a after they've grinded whatever they want to grind in the game, the transmogs don't exactly look great, so you know, no. not exactly a fantastic situation. Okay, balancing. Once again, island event balancing. Nobody cares. Um, chain blades. Okay, they've done something weird with the chain blades. I'm going to tell you this straight up. They've increased the blade spin damage per hit from 65 to 85, decreased meter generation from lacerating onslaught attacks, uh, and they made it generate less meter, but, I mean, whatever. Um, like I said, most builds were not even running uh, lacerating onslaught. It's just, just a wound build, maybe. But, yeah, um, most of these weren't, weren't running this because, uh, quite frankly, at the later stage of the game, you need to dash in and out with the chain blades. But I'm very happy with the blade spin damage increase because it didn't feel weak to me. And now with the increase in damage, I'm like, okay, this is going to get sick with chain blades. Chain blade main, I'm happy. Nasher, the rage tail Nasher attacks, tail attacks now send shockwaves that only travel in the direction the tail is facing during each slam. So dodging is now better. Rejoice. Um, Koshai, they've made some uh, changes to the antlers and the tail attacks now have clearer tails. Okay. Sticksy and pounces are now much shorter. They do more damage up front and no longer require a button mash to escape. So, but you can still probably escape by if you guys know my tricks. Hit the lantern button when it pounces on you, and you will just clear it off you. Like especially if you're using something like either the Pangar's Frost Lantern or the Scarns. The Scarns especially will just knock them off you. Okay. Quality of life. Swinging blades has returned with some adjustments. Hold light attack when you're not in the middle of another combo to perform swinging blades. So basically, when you're standing there and you got nothing better to do, swing your blades, swing your blades. Woo! That's basically what Swinging Blades is. So Swinging Blades has now returned. We're going to examine them uh, right after the update drops, so look forward to that. Um, I don't know how this uh, combo is going to function, but it, it might be interesting to have it back. Like, it, it seems to be like something that, like, you know, in the middle of an attack, I could probably throw this in somewhere when I'm, when I'm not keen on, like, doing, like, massive attacks or something like that. Either that or it's going to be good for clearing out minions, which might be actually very helpful. Um, gliders added three new expert handling nodes at Milestone uh, 9 and Slayer's Path. Each node reduces the stamina cost of gliding. Okay, great. More things in the Slayer Path. Swoops and dives more dynamic and responsive. Improved the glider collision system to prevent unexpected crashes. Fine. Bug fixes. Okay, Koshai's antlers can no longer be severed when they aren't fully grown. Shadow Touch Koshai antlers can now be targeted and are now a distinct break for the head. Karabak fixed an issue where Karabak's either charged blades could be hit before they appear. Okay. Fix some issues where behemoths would get stuck near walls. Fix an issue on where on kill part rewards would get bigger when hunting the same behemoth multiple times in a row. Bonus loot now resets properly. Okay. Fix an issue where behemoths that crawled out of the ground would enter arenas in strange ways. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of sick they, they fixed that one. That was a funny bug. Okay. Frost sprites spawned by Boreas weapons now clean up properly when switching weapons. Great. Quests fix an issue that allowed players to hand in the same item for multiple quests. Okay. Achievements and trophies. The buy low, high, sell, sell high achievement trophy now correctly unlocks when you exchange an epic cell. The reforged celebration will no longer appear for players when another player reforges after them. Uh, Frost Wolf and Savate weapon unique effects now display the correct values when inspected. Yeah, because they nerfed these, but they never changed the text. Okay, at least they fixed that. All right, that brings us to the end of these patch notes. Um, all right, well, there's some content in here. At least it looks like I'll, I'll be busy for a little bit of time. I hope that they will come up with something soon because, you know, I'm, I'm, look, I'm really looking forward to this raiding escalation and, uh, you know, we're going to see how it goes. So make sure you join us for the all-night event for Thursday Night SmackDown. We'll be doing uh, Dauntless, then during the update we'll be playing Paladins, and then we'll be back on Dauntless again after all that. So I hope you guys will have a good time with us. Um, Thank you very much for accompanying me for this, Kaz, and for giving your perspective as well. Of course. We're going to go to the thank you scene now. February's top supporters, Bravo7910, Alien Frost 80 Zavi Uzumaki, Kaz Mantum, a lovely girl, Zach NFG, Shroot, I'm a Boxhead, Franz Schubert, Pinomies, Aaron Elrod, Julian Quarles, Nate Great, Don't Mind Me, Johnny Nara, Rune Eater, Ohm Screen Buff, Michael Riley, Rogue Assassin, The Mighty <laughs> Zeno. You guys are awesome. Listen, um, those who are in March will be in this list very soon. So if you want your names in... Now is the time to tip, super chat, whatever, especially as we go into the first week to make sure your names are up there, all right? 
And here's the Throne of Honor for March. Death Dawning 982 plus Ultra, Kyle Fancher plus Ultra, Ole Miss Cream Puff Prestige, The Mighty Zeno, Jerry Fast, Franz Schubert, Stephen Martin, Logan Schwartz, Pinomies, Ditorious Venom, The Forgotten, Nate the Great, Zack and FG, all Prestige. Thank you guys so much, and we'll catch you all on the next one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and if you want to support this channel, keep it running. Make sure to drop a tip via link in the description of the video. Send super thanks on YouTube. Become a channel member and gain access to various perks, or, you know, make sure to take lots of clips of my stream. Thank you guys. I'll catch you on the next one, okay? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.